Welcome to the Rockstar in Life podcast, where you learn the secrets to unleashing your inner rock star so you can make the world your stage. Hey, fellow rock stars in life, Dr. Dan here, and I've got my co host with me, Siri Shakti. She's in the house. I'm in the house. Awesome. So, <laughs> today's episode, we are going to be talking about being you. Actually, it's just be you. <laughs> so, being me. No, yeah, being me, but you're being you. Who is you? <laughs> what is that? Yes. <laughs> okay, let me just put it out there. We're talking about really being your authentic self. And, you know, it's interesting because with this topic, it's like you would think like, oh, being myself, that's easy, right? But you know what? What we've come to discover over the years is that it's not always easy to be your authentic self, right, Dan? Yeah. Because through growing up, you know, influences as you're going through school, conditioning, Not only not only through family and friends and school, but also, you know, society as a whole and media, all of these influences are, like you said, right, conditioning. They're yeah. conditioning us to to think a certain way, to behave a certain way, to dress a certain way. And, you know, all of a sudden we're grown up, we're adults, and we wonder why there's a piece of us that doesn't really always feel like like happy or satisfied. Do well, you feel like that? Because I don't. No, I, I don't. I always feel amazing. <laughs> I, no, I, I mean. <laughs> yeah, anyways. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it actually reminded me of, of that story. Um, there was like a study done and um, and they took a bunch of monkeys. I forgot how many it was. I don't know. Do you remember that story? So they took a bunch of monkeys. They put them in a, I don't know, it was a glass box or a box or a cage or something like that. And what they did was they had like um, a banana, right? So they had a banana um, coming out from the top and the banana actually was electrified. So, or, you know, whatever, however they did that, they set it up to where the banana or the, uh, the monkey would climb a little ladder or something, grab the banana. And if it tried to grab the banana, it got electric shocked. Well, the other monkeys in there saw it as well. I don't know. It might have taken like one or two tries and they got shocked. And so all the monkeys in there knew that, you know, if they grabbed that banana, they would get shocked because they saw it, right? Because they either saw it or they did it themselves. Right. Right. Well, what they did was they slowly took out, took out one um, monkey at a time. So all of a sudden, if there was, let's say, five monkeys in there that knew, all of a sudden they only had four monkeys in there that knew that they would get electrocuted. And then, then they would, uh, you know, then the new monkey would go in and touch it and get shocked or whatever. And it got to the point to where they replaced all the monkeys that hadn't been shocked yet. So there was like five monkeys or whatever in there and none of them been shocked. And, but yet none of them would go and grab that banana because they oh, saw wow. the other monkeys ahead of them not going to get that banana for some reason. Right. So they had been conditioned to be like, oh, there's something wrong or something. I'm not going to chance it or whatever. Yes. And that's the condition. It's, it's just like I remember years ago, I, um, I was like uh, sitting on the side of the, not sitting, but I was on the side of the highway. <laughs> and um, I remember seeing like all these like, you know, huge cows. And they're sitting there just eating their grass, right? Just eating the grass. <laughs> and there was like this tiny, thin metal fence that was like, you know, there was like a two foot gap to three foot gap in between the fence. And yeah. the fence, like, there's no way that, you know, 20 pounds of pressure probably could just knock it over. Yeah. And a cow's a heck of a lot stronger and bigger than that. But the cow stayed inside of that fence. Yep. Because it's too afraid to venture out or to, you know, or it's been conditioned because maybe it did try to get out of like a stronger fence at one point and it just assumes that they're all strong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I do know some places use like those electric fences as well. So yeah, this one wasn't electric because I touched it. Oh, you touched it. (laughs) You you tested it out. (laughs) Yeah, that'd be pretty bad anyways, put an electric fence on the side of a highway where somebody could accidentally touch it. Yeah. That would not be cool. That's true. Yeah. That would really suck. Yeah. But that could have been the case. It could have been an electric fence, mm-hmm. you know, at some point and it got shocked and it just said, oh, I'll never touch a fence again. Yeah. You know? So again, that's, you know, being your true self. 
Yeah. You know, that makes me think about, like, I know for myself going through public school, and I know everyone has, you know, different experiences, but- It's like Lord of the Flies. Like, well- You guys have ever seen that movie. (laughs) I always remember, I've said this before, but I always felt like I was always, like, different than than the kids, you know? I wasn't, like, the popular kids, and although I really wanted to be, (laughs) but it just wasn't in the cards for me. But I do remember- and thank God it wasn't. Well, yeah. Thank God yeah. you didn't go through that because then you wouldn't be who you are today. Exactly. And the same thing for me. Yes, yes. But I do remember, especially during like junior high, high school time, which is such an impressionable time, right? Becoming a, a young adult, that I would kind of hold back that what I would call like inner light now, right? I would hold back my 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 gifts and my light because I didn't want to stand out too much because standing mm-hmm. out meant pain for me because I was made fun of. And I, I yeah. remember you said that you went through this as well. And I know so many people can relate to this because, you know, you get teased enough times and it signals in your brain and your heart that it's not safe for me to just be myself. And so we we change ourselves a little bit just to kind of, you know, along the way to fit in. Or we, like I said, we hold back so we're not completely expressing who we are. And this is really the core of what we're talking about because, you know, most of you listening, I'm sure you're, you're adults now or, you know, young adults. Um, and... One one thing, I think the greatest gift that we can give ourselves in this lifetime is to, to free ourselves of this. And it's it's not always easy. I mean, really choosing to allow yourself to be who you are and who you were meant to be in this lifetime, it takes courage, doesn't it? Yeah. No, I, I remember, I don't remember the year, but I, I don't even know if I mentioned this before. I went to a... I don't even know you call it, I guess, a private school, but it wasn't a private school. It was actually a really small class. Was it like a continuation? No, it was a, it was. So when I was younger, my parents had me in this, I guess it was like one of my teachers in my like, I don't know, first grade or something. Mm -hmm. And she had started a, a school out of her house where there was like five or six kids. And I was, you know, or maybe it was 10, I don't know, but you know, I was part of that. And I remember bits and pieces of it and I know that, you know, I didn't have any trouble in there. Um, but then, um, it only went up to a certain, you know, age and then, you know, they stopped teaching and then I had to go to regular school, public school. And all of a sudden I was throwing in this Lord of the flies, you know? (laughs) And, uh, and I remember, um, you know, like doing, you know, not realizing that there was this like this pecking order, you know, of like, you know, Hey, I'm the king of the school or, you know, and if if you stand up or anything or try and shine bright, I'm going to beat you up or tease you or make fun of you. And, uh, and I remember, you know, even in, you know, like uh, junior high, I remember, you know, like uh, wanting, not wanting to be the popular kid. I mean, yeah, I'm sure I did, but I didn't really see any like, like borders, like, you know, oh, you know, like you need to be this way and I need, you know, and you're, you're below me or whatever, you know? Yeah. And I remember like somebody that was like considered one of the very popular kids had like made a joke about my haircut or something. And, and I came up, you know, you know me, I'm pretty good with comebacks. Yes. (laughs) And, uh, and I came back with a really good comeback. I thought it was really good. (laughs) And then the next words out of his mouth was, you know, we're fighting. You know, oh my God. So, and, and here's the worst po- <laughs> part about fighting. Okay. I don't like to fight. You know, I've, I've, uh, you know, I've, I've done boxing I've done Taekwondo and I've, I've done, a, you know, I've done Kempo and, um, and for me, I didn't, especially younger, I wasn't, I didn't do any of those things when I was that age, but I remember like, you know, thinking like, oh great. You know, I got to plan a fight. It was like, it was like for like later in the week or something. <laughs> Like Friday, what? we're fighting and it's like Tuesday or something. I'm like, are you, what? Do we need like Don King to like, you know, <laughs> promote this fight or something? I mean, it was like worse and I didn't even end up going and then I got made fun of for that oh too. But you know, I mean, if he would have hit me or swung at me, then I'm sure I would have fought there. But, you know, having to plan it a whole 
couple days in advance. I'm like, come on, man. This reminds me of like like the old movies from, you know, they're like, duel, like tomorrow yeah, behind, my the, honor. <laughs> behind the castle. <laughs> yeah, well, this is actually, uh, and this is even funnier. This is the Christmas tree farm. Wait, what? Yeah, imagine that. So it was a Christmas. We're fighting Friday at the Christmas tree farm. <laughs> Yeah. That's actually funny. <laughs> yeah, because it's actually uh, where next to the school there was uh, there was like this Christmas tree farm. I don't even know if it's still there. They might have put you know houses wow. on it now, but they like had small Christmas trees there and pine trees, and they would take them and and uh, move them. I guess after they get a certain height, and then plant them somewhere else or whatever. But yeah, so pretty funny. Tell all of us, did the fight really happen? No, the fight never happened. Did you not? Were you a no show? <laughs> um, I ended up not showing, yeah, because, uh, yeah, I just. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had actually planned on showing, and um, and then I just didn't. I just, I don't know. Because it was stupid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like at, at that point, I just felt like, you know, because like the person that's that gets angry is not the same person, you know, a couple days or even a couple hours or a yes. couple minutes. Just like when you get into an argument with somebody or somebody says something and you lash out and then you feel guilty and you're like, oh, I shouldn't have said that. That person that, that, you know, is feeling guilty is not you at that, at that moment. Okay. In that moment, you felt rage. And then at the next moment you didn't. Yeah. So yeah, yes, you do have to, you know, tone for what you've done or apologize, yeah. but just realize that those were two different personalities yeah. coming out of you. Yeah. That's that's one thing I love within like the yoga teachings is that we have uh multiple personalities within ourselves. Yeah. And and I totally resonate with that. And it's not I'm, a cop out and it's right. not a, oh, it wasn't my fault, it wasn't no, me. <laughs> not at all. It's just more of a of a an awareness that yeah. Like I've thought about that before, like when I was really upset about something and then a little bit later I calmed down. I'm like, that was a different part of me that was responding in that way. And yeah. now I've shifted to this, you know, think of it as like your dog that, you know, was fearful for your safety for whatever reason and right. bit somebody. Yeah. And, you know, maybe the dog had no reason to be that, but it just was or whatever. You're mm -hmm. going to apologize. You weren't the you weren't the one that bit the person. Yeah. But it was, <laughs> you know, your responsibility because <laughs> yes, yes. it's your dog and you have it on a leash or whatever. It's, it's very similar in a way. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. So one thing I, I will mention is I love this. It's, it, you know, something that's always stuck with me when it when it came to being my truth, being my true self is that, you know, if you are playing down for others because you're afraid that they won't like you or or for whatever reason, or they're going to make fun of you, or you remember, you know, how people made fun of you when you acted a certain way. And, you know, now you're older, you're grown up, or you're not in that situation anymore, but yet you still kind of are afraid. So you're playing small. Well, just remember, if you try to please everybody, you end up not pleasing anybody. Yeah. Yeah. Especially yourself. That most importantly yeah. yourself, mm -hmm. but trying to please everybody, you're not going to please anybody. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's so true. So whether this be business, whether this be your own personal life, you know, you can't go around in life just trying to please people. Yeah. Yeah. You can't. Yeah. I, I wanted to share a little bit about my own story, uh, because this, what you were just saying goes hand in hand with that. And it's been about 11 years since I first started practicing Kundalini Yoga. And at that time, I was going through a really big life change. And, you know, it, it, it's funny because people that I know now, they see me as who I am now. And they think yeah. I've just always been that way. Like, whoa, you're like, like, <laughs> you're like this cosmic girl, that woman that's like... <laughs> So like calm and peace. And I just feel at peace when I'm yeah. around you. <laughs> but they think you just like, you know, fart rainbows. And <laughs> I t honey, I do. Actually, I do. No, <laughs> she does. She has oh, a rainbow God. coming out right now. Let's not talk about that. No, <laughs> no but, but, you know, um, I mean, it's easy to look at someone and think they've always been like that. And I think about that, like with, with different teachers that I, I, I love and I learn from. Um, but, you know, before I found like Kundalini Yoga and I really started making changes in my life, I was at a point where I I was really not happy. And I talked about this in, I think, one of our first episodes um, when we were discussing our, our stories, but I'll just touch on it briefly, is that 
you know, I was at a, a place where I I was really searching and I, I, I remember each day feeling like really unsatisfied with myself. And I, I wanted to, I wanted in some sense to fit into the image of what I, I thought women needed to be. And for me, that meant like, you know, wearing like Mac, like a lot of Mac makeup and things like that. And let me put it out there. I don't have anything against makeup. It's just, for me, I felt like I had to wear it. I couldn't even leave the house without it or I wasn't beautiful. And I'd spend like an hour each morning doing my makeup, another hour straightening my hair. And I have like wavy curly hair, so that would take a long time. And I'd buy all my clothes at like BB, which is like tight fitted, you know, clothes that... I think it's pronounced Beeb. It's not Beeb. <laughs> it's BB. Just Get it kidding. right. Okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I remember you'd sit in the closet and cry because you just yeah. like, didn't know what to wear. Like, I, oh, I'm going to oh, tell so all important. of you. <laughs> it's so important to pick my outfit for today. Because I was, I was so unhappy and I was trying to fulfill myself with these external things that I thought were going to make the difference, but it wasn't, you know, and, um, and it wasn't filling that, that gap within myself. And then I was introduced to Kundalini Yoga and I remember I started meeting like women that seems so confident, they seem so centered. And I was like, so attracted to that. I'm like, I want to understand what these women are experiencing. And little by little, I started like adopting parts of, you know, uh, the yoga tradition and just other, you know, new, new way of, of um, being a woman in, in society. And I felt like I was slowly like, liberating myself, honestly, like I was pulling the chains off. And I even remember at this one time, I really had that sensation that I was actually like, like unchaining myself, because it was it felt so heavy before. And, and so it was just a beautiful experience. And I'll tell you what, that is my that is my wish for every single one of you that is listening is that you begin to observe yourself and notice what are the things that I'm maybe avoiding? What is something about myself that I'm not sharing with with the world or even with my family? Because I understand I'm from experience, there are things that I hid from my family. I hid my own light, my own gifts. And those are your loved ones. Those are the ones you're supposed to be able to shine to and be really authentic with. So I want you to ask yourself that question. And I don't, I don't, I'm not telling you like overnight, just like change everything. That's not the point of this, but just but little why by, not? well, okay. You make a good point, but, but it, plant the seed, plant the seed. And, but also, and water it every day. Okay. Plant the seed, water it every day. But I, I remember at least for myself, it was kind of like little steps at a time of like reclaiming, you know, parts of myself that were, Plant the seed, yeah, and water it. <laughs> okay, you know what? <laughs> some people's some people's <laughs> plants will grow faster. Yes. Some won't. Yes, and there's gonna be pushback. <laughs> so expect that there's gonna be pushback. Yeah, right. You've heard us talk about that. Yes, plenty yes. of time. So expect that, and when it comes, which it will, but that's okay. You know, be the water. Yeah, you know, flow. Yeah, flow, mm-hmm. flow around those obstacles. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. find those angles. Don't try and just force your way through. And trust me, like, man, we go through some stuff. Yes. Even this week, even today, yesterday, we go through stuff. Oh, yes. Yeah, constantly. We get lots of pushback. And then other times, it's just like flowing. It's like, whoa, this is so amazing. Wow. Yeah. You know, and other times you're like, what's going on? You know? Yep. <laughs> so. And just like you were saying, you can't make everyone happy. You know, as you begin to make shifts in yourself and in your life, uh, and you begin to really step into more of your your true authentic self, there may be people in your life, people that are very close to you, that might not really understand. <laughs> no, the, they, they won't. Know? Most of they them won't. won't understand. Yeah. You know, and they'll feel threatened or, yeah. or worried or, or something like that. Yeah. And, and some of them will keep it to themselves, but some of them will be outright like 
just blunt about it. <laughs> and yeah, and, what are you doing? You, mm-hmm. you're that's not you. Yeah, why are you wearing that or why are you acting yeah. like that? That's not you. What's that saying? You know that um, I always forget exactly how it goes, but you know if you want to be like a, a guru or you want to be like um, like famous or whatever, then you have to move out of your hometown. Right. <laughs> Because <laughs> everybody that's there is just going to remember you as, as, you as you were growing up yeah. and how you were. And it's so true. Like, yeah. that's one of the reasons why, like, I don't really enjoy going back to, like, Northern California where, <laughs> where I grew up. You know, I mean, I yeah. have some great memories there. Mm-hmm. But the person that lived there is not the person that I am today. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I love where I am now in Southern California. And I feel like when I go back, sometimes I'm like, oh, yeah remember these little memories or whatever. And I don't feel my, it takes me a little while to, to get my balance back. Yes. You yes. Know? I understand that it's, too. It's a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And, and another thing too, is if you do get the, the, this like pushback or like um, judgment from, from people in your life, don't take that as an indication of, should you be, you know, expressing this or stepping into this and within yourself, that's not a clear, that's, that's not the judgment that you want to, to follow. And you're not being true. You're not being true to yourself. I mean, it it just takes a conversation. You know, I've had people say to me like, Oh, you know, uh, are are you doing this because of this or, or whatever? And, you know, and, and I, so many examples of that. And, and I just, you know, I just told him, I said, well, this is what I'm doing now. Yep. You know, it was, it was a personal choice. Yeah. This is how I'm doing it. And, you know, I mean, I've, I've had people tell me, you know, all kinds of things like, you know, get your head out of the clouds, you know, uh, get a safe, secure job. You know, why don't you get into computer, you know, like uh, programming or, you know, back then it was like computer networking repair or whatever the heck that was, you know, and. Right. And, and engineering and, and, you know, and I even took some classes and, and did some courses and some stuff, you know, where you had to pay like thousands of dollars to go through, but it wasn't me. And, uh, and then once I started even getting into, uh, into online marketing and offering services to business owners and, and other businesses and helping people with branding and stuff like that, I had people constantly telling me that, you know, Hey, you should dr- dress professional. You know, you should, you know, wear, wear a collared shirt and, you know, and, and, and be more professional. And, um, and I remember, you know, like I did for a little while and I'm like, what am I doing? No, I'm not doing this. Yeah. You know, I would just, then I would just like wear my shirt, my shorts, you know, and I'd wear like, you know, like a a skull shirt or whatever, my bling, my rings and my earrings and stuff like that. And, you know, and, and people were like, well, why aren't you dressing more? Because I'm, that's not me. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm going to be me. And if, if they want to do business with me, then they can or they can't, you yeah. know. And um, and I remember like also like, you know, be safe with my branding, you know, because like our branding is all about rock star. You know, even this podcast is rock star in life. Yes. You know, I've had people say like, I don't really, you know. I don't like to think of it like me as a rock star. You know, I don't feel comfortable saying rock star. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> that that's fine. Whatever, you know, Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to call yourself that. Yeah. Um, and even like our branding for our two rock stars company and with our logo and I had a, we have exploding logos and fire, yeah. you know, uh, for our intros and stuff and our videos. And we're like really high energy yeah. and in your face a lot of the time. And, you know, sometimes we curse, you know, when it's necessary mm-hmm. yeah. and we to have people's atten- yeah. attention. Mm-hmm. And we have people saying like, oh, that's not how you should do business and all this other. No, we're doing fine. Yeah. And you know what? If people don't want to want to work with us or, or work with me or listen to what I have to say, then they weren't the right person for me anyways. Yeah. Because you know what? Again, you're not going to please everybody. And if I put myself into that box where I'm going to, where I'm going to be like, I'm going to be like this person over here. And just, you know, sit there with a suit and a tie, not move around and talk really slow and be very m- professional. You would be miserable. <laughs> I'd be miserable. I'd be unhappy. And it would it would go through in my work and, and the things that I'm doing and the things yeah. I'm creating. And nobody would want to be part of that. And if they were, they'd probably be bored as heck as well, yeah. <laughs> you know? So you, you can't do that. So until I shed myself of 
what I thought everybody wanted me wanted me to be or needed me to be and what people told me I should do. Um, once I shed myself of that, that's when my business and everything exploded for me in a great way. Yes. And they cont- and it continues to, mm-hmm. as long as I stay true to myself. Yeah. Yep. And it's going, like you were saying, is it, we're not here on this planet to make everyone love us, everyone happy. The right people who are meant to be in your world are going to be attracted to who you are and what you're what you're putting out into the world. And one thing I, I always think about when it comes to this whole like authentic self topic is that truly each of us, I, I mean, I believe this to my core, that we're all born with innate abilities and gifts. And most of us aren't tapped into it. We we ignore it, right? But hey guys, I mean, look at our planet right now. Look at look at the world that we live in. I mean, it is like it is time for us to show up in our lives, for ourselves, for the people in our in our families and and the people in this world. And if any time is a good time to start being who you are, it is right now. Okay? I mean, that is really what this world needs in in big numbers and it all starts with us. It starts with you. So, yeah. Stop playing small. Yeah. Yeah, be your truth. Yeah. Be your true self. Yeah. Be be a force for good. Yeah. We should also add that just in case yeah, somebody's like Yeah, be a like, force for good. My truth is to be evil. No, don't. <laughs> You're probably not listening to this, but just in case you are, if you think your truth is to be evil, don't. <laughs> like to be like a cool, like evil villain. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we've, we've got the the next uh, evil villain out there. I was trying to think of one, Dr. Evil, you know. <laughs> no. Well, is there anything else you'd like to add before we get to our rock star mission? No. I'll, I'd like to add before we get to that, don't forget to go to rockstarinlife.com to get links and resources mentioned in this episode, download the transcript, um, download our free books, training, yoga, meditation, homeschooling advice, and so much more that we're continuously adding and we'll be adding more and more and more. So remember to go to rockstarinlife.com and join the Rockstar in Life revolution today. Beautiful. Awesome. So today's Rockstar mission... I know uh, Siri Shakti was like, you always say three things. Well, three <laughs> things fit. I like it. Why? Because it's more than one. I'm like, can't we be easy on them and do like one or two? But we're doing three. That's even harder. <laughs> one? Because like when you got one thing, it's like, what should I choose? True. Like I was in the car today. We were driving home from, you know, I picked up the kids and, and we went out to dinner and stuff. And we we're driving home and... Um, Siri Shakti was actually doing a class somewhere in LA and, um, and we're driving in the car and I said to Bodhi, I said, Hey, what's your favorite movie? (laughs) And he goes, Ooh, only one. How about I give you my top five? You know, <laughs> my favorite five. <laughs> and then I and then we started talking about movies and then he named another movie and he's like, Oh yeah, that's my, that's my, uh, at least my 15th. Oh my word. <laughs> I was like, nice. That's awesome. Yeah. So three things. <laughs> okay. Three makes it a heck of a lot easier. You've and stated if, your case. So we're doing three. Yeah. And if you want more, that's my truth. If you want more than three, you could even do that. We're not going to limit you, right? Be your truth, be your true self, right? Yes. So what I want you to do is I want you to write down and and think about and then write down what are three things that you've held back on or you've played small out of fear or some bad advice, you know, some some conditioning, some things that people have told you when you're growing up or maybe recently that, you know, they're like, oh, that's not you or, you know, you can't do that or you're too old to start doing that, you know. There are plenty of stories and stories of, you know, I mean, people join getting in professional sports at an older age, you know, doing all kinds of getting into shape when they're in their seventies, you know, people that look like they're in their, in their thirties, better shape than most people in their thirties and forties. And they're in their seventies. Yes. There are so many examples and examples of everything. So 
you're not limited by anything. You're only limited by what you believe in. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah. So of course. write down those those three things and commit. Commit that you're no longer going to play small and that you're going to let your true self out to the world and use it for good. Be a force for good. You know, I, I like to say <laughs> for me, because, uh, you know, I get a little crazy sometimes, right? And I like to say, I like to let my freak flag fly, you know, <laughs> or my cray cray flag. <laughs> You're good at that. I am. You've mastered it. I have. Yes. And it gets worse. I was telling, I was telling Bodhi, because we were talking about stuff and, and he was like, Kaylee's crazy and she's weird. And I was like, Bodhi, I'm weird and I'm crazy. He's like, no, but not as much. I was like, yeah, because you see me at home. But right. like when I'm away from you guys and I have nobody else to joke around with or anything i go a little cuckoo you know <laughs> i've heard stories of you at, at your events and things you and and ben joking with people and having fun and oh yeah yeah, yeah. love having fun being yeah. my truth being my true self yeah you know and i have constantly had people come up to me and they're like you know I love just how you're out there having fun and joking around. Everybody else here is like trying to get something from each other. They're like trying to sell me on this or sell me on that. Like, Hey, here's why you should partner with me on this product or, you know, do this course with me or sell my thing or whatever. And here you are, you walk up and you know, and you, you ask me a silly question, you know, <laughs> and, and you didn't even mention, you didn't even like try and pitch me anything or tell me about your business or nothing. It was like no business talk whatsoever. You guys are just joking around. Yeah. You know, and, uh, and I thought that was great. And yeah. I, you know, I don't do it for that reason. I, I do it to entertain myself and just have fun. Yeah. You know, that's cool. And not at the expense of others, obviously. I'm right. not like teasing people and, and belittling them, them and making them feel bad. Yeah. No. I mean, I do sometimes <laughs> I'm human. So I've, I've done that in the past. Yeah. So I apologize if you're listening saying, no, you do that. You did it to me. <laughs> well, trust me, you did it too. So that's why I did it to you back. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> So yes, so take those three things, commit that you're no longer going to play small, that you're going to revive them, you're going to breathe some life into them, and you're going to be your truth, and you're going to be a force for good with it. That's right. For yourself and for your family, for your loved ones, for the world. Yep. Yes. All right, guys. Well, don't forget to get out there and not only be yourself, but be a rock star in your life. And make the world your stage. Thanks for listening to Rockstar in Life, your source for unleashing your inner rockstar. For more tips, training, and free stuff, be sure to go to rockstarinlife.com and join the Rockstar in Life revolution today. Thanks again, and don't forget to make the world your stage. <laughs>